Hi everybody, welcome to Rotto Runs Through, where today we have Rüschefert, a new game that came out in 2012, which has already started to command some very, very high prices because it had a very limited print run. And because of that, I figured I should probably do a run-through of it so people can get an idea of whether it's a game for them before they put the big, big money down on the table. So, let's get into it, shall we? Now, this is a game set in the German Industrial Revolution where players run coal shipping companies that have barges. Where's my barge? Oh, here's a barge. They have these little barges that go upriver to collect coal, which are these big, gigantic dice that represent various amounts of coal sitting on docks, and then ship it downriver to make money so that they can buy stuff, which scores them points. Okay, and uh, let's just jump right into it with that preamble. First thing we do every turn is conduct our historical event of that turn. Now, the game takes place over 12 turns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we're on turn number one, where the historical event of that turn is the beginning of this whole Industrial Revolution where we're shipping coal around. So it's represented by this um, icon, which means determine who the star player is. That is the event of the first turn. The events get a little bit more thematic as the game goes on, because actually it's really interesting. All these events are actually tied to real historical events that happened at various times over this 120 year period. So um, at the beginning of the whole age, we determine star player. And I will be the star player. Chosen randomly? No, I'm just star player. Okay, step number two, the water level and demand determination. We determine if there's going to be any additional demand for coal this turn or if there's going to be any trouble because the waters might rise or fall. So we come over here into the uh, magic cup of chickenness and we pull out um, a demand. A demand tile. Okay. This means three cities represented by these symbols, those are the city's flags or whatever, are going to have a higher than normal demand for coal. So I got to find these cities and give them some money to spend. So we go by these uh, banners. Let's see, that's the, I don't know if you can really make it out, it's kind of hard to see. The one on the right is the double knight thing, which I believe is over here in Hattigan. Yes, okay. So Hattigan needs some more money to spend. The little red Y, which is Verden, Verden right here. See, it's kind of hard to tell. You can see that red Y, that's the same as that red Y right there. That's saying Verdon has a demand. And then the last one is this one, which I think, is it steel? No. Is it? Oh, no, it's, it's Mulheim. Mulheim. Mulheim has some demand. Again, because, you know, the symbol of the city is right here. So those three cities have a higher than normal demand for coal this turn. So it'd be worth our t trouble to actually deliver to them if we can. So Alternatively, we could have pulled a tile that would have changed the water level and that would have done different stuff, but hopefully I'll be able to show you that. Basically, it, it kind of limits you and can um, affect the value of coal if the water level changes, but instead we had more demand. Next up, the starting space and special option selection phase happens where each player chooses a spot to put their ship or their ship, their barge to pick up coal and also chooses a special action they'll do for that. And so for starters, let's see think I am going to choose the transport action and I'm going to put myself, well see I want to put myself, I want to pick up some coal that I'll be able to deliver to probably either Verden or Muleheim because these guys will pay more than normal. And so I think yeah this is the one for me because I, here I'll be delivering four pips of coal which is worth four bucks instead of these guys up here which are only worth three. Now, I could get this guy down here, which is also worth four bucks, and deliver to Muleheim, which is kind of nice too. But a big, big strategic element of the game, or a tactical element of the game, is trying to stay further upriver. Whoever is furthest upriver has more power. So I didn't go, I mean, I could have come all the way up here to this one. I would have been all the way upriver, but I'm kind of coming here in the middle, both because I get more money off of this coal instead of this one, and because I'll be able to deliver to Verdon while I'll get more money. I should also say, while there's coal up here, up in the, uh, I don't know what you call them, it was the Geschaft area or something like that, we do not have the ability to get our barges all the way up there at this point to get that coal. That's something we can unlock on the tech tree later on. So for the first almost the first half of the game, that half of the board is really off limits to us, but we'll get there eventually. So anyway, I've chosen this space and the action I chose was the transport. And what that means is, I'm gonna come over here to the transport track, where at the beginning of the game, and this is all preset by the way, the, this is set up for a two player game where all the dice are, including this one, with more players. Hi Tula, uh, hi Jen, oh no, she, all right. Uh, there she goes, into the kitchen. Um, anyway, I chose to transport this coal 
And what that means is this is a transport track. Over time, more and more coal will show up here and it'll get kind of pushed down. When it gets pushed off the bottom, it automatically shows up on the river because it's getting transported down this road. But what I've done is with this action, I've kind of sent a little, I don't know what you'd call this, kind of a skiff up to grab that coal and get transported um, to the river quicker. And so I'm gonna, I can choose anywhere, any of these coal docks where I want it to be, I'm gonna choose to put it right there. Okay, and now it's Jen's turn where she gets to choose an action and uh, place her guy. And now I think she is gonna go a very different way. She's gonna choose the pilot action which gives her a little bit more control over where she can deliver her coal. Normally there's very strict rules but this will give her a bit more control. And so, where she, now again, she could come up river and deliver one of these three bees, but she's going to go a different way. She's going to come all the way down river and get this other coal down here, uh, this other four pointer, and deliver it further down river. Okay, so we have completed the starting space and special option selection. Step four, movement and coal sales. And now, um, I am first player, and the reason for that, I continue to hold first player because I'm furthest up river. If Jen had chosen one of these dice, like she chosen this guy, she would have become first player because she is further up river than me. But she went down river, so she's left this to me, so I'm still first player. And so I act first. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my ship and move it one, two spaces down here to Verdon, where I will get this delivery. And for my trouble, I'll get one extra dollar. So I'll just come over here, and oops, over here, and put on my player board, that extra buck I got. Now, the rules are always that whenever you deliver downriver, you always move two spaces, which is what I just did. I went one past this obstacle, um, which is kind of a dam or a weir or something like that, and then space number two to the town. And I've successfully delivered this big old four pip dice to Verdon. Now, there's a couple things that happened. Because I went across this obstacle, when, again, you know, the rules say they're like dams and whatnot that fishermen have used. The, the quality of my coal has dropped because of the jostling that had to, you know, because it, you know, it's, it's kind of been pulverized a little bit by going over this rough water. And so I'm actually going to turn this four into a three. Yeah, whenever you go over one of these obstacles, you lose a pip, a value of it. Now, it doesn't matter. I mean, I could have gone over like four or five or six of these things. I would have only lost one pip, but I've lost one pip. So what I've done is I've delivered a three-pointer. And what I, and I come back over here, and so this will now represent coal that will get added back to the game later. I put it here into, onto the transport track. Um, I collect three bucks. One, two, three. Oops, again, wrong place. One, two, three. So I've made four bucks off of this. However... There's a caveat. This is the first time I've ever delivered coal to a city. And so I um, have to, this is where the tech track of the game comes in. You'll notice there's this little space up here that represents me delivering black coal or white coal, you know, black dice or white dice, to industrial spots, to cities, which is what I've just done, that orange, which kind of represents, you know, the orange of the city I was just in, to delivering black dice to um, orange cities or delivering black dice to Ruhrport. And now I have just delivered my first black dye, my first black coal to a city, which means I put a marker here to say I've done it once. And, be, and I basically had to pay one of the four bucks I made for that marker. And that represents the fact that you know, I'm kind of setting up my, um, you know, my chain of transport in the city. So it cost me a bit of money to actually get in there. Unfortunately, so I didn't quite make as much as I could have. I lost one pip's worth by going over the rough waters, and then I lost another pip by setting up my first set of industry in a city. But that'll pay off later, as I'll show. Okay, so that was my turn. I have delivered, I, I have done my movement and made my sale a coal. And now it's Jen's turn, she's gonna do the same. Let's come over here and look at her. Now, she's in the same situation. She could go one, two, exactly like I did, and deliver in Muleheim and have pretty much the exact same result. Her four pip would have turned to a three because of the rough waters. She would have made an extra buck, et cetera, et cetera. But remember, she chose the pilot action, which means she can break the two-step rule. She can move more than one, two steps. She can move further than that, and that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna go one, two, three, four, and drive her all the way down here to Ruhrport means she skipped this extra buck she could make and she is delivering this coal to the main city of Ruhrport where some special stuff happens when you do that. And let's go over that now. Uh, first of all, like always, because she went over an obstacle. Oh, here's Dobby, by the way. Dobby, say hello to everybody. Dobby. Oh, hello. Okay, she's on the hunt for food, I think. 
Okay, um, because she went over an obstacle, the quality of her coal went down one. It became a three. All right. And let's see. We put this over here to indicate that this will be coal that's... It represents now coal that will get delivered later on in the game. There's a three. So for her troubles, she gets three bucks. One, two, three. However, just like me, she has to lose one of those to put a... Um, to put one of these progress markers to show that she has started working on her ability, her infrastructure, to deliver coal to Ruhrport. So she had to lose one of her pips for this, so she made two bucks. However, a nice benefit, whenever you deliver to Ruhrport, you always get one extra dollar. So really, she made a total of three bucks and delivered to Ruhrport. So she started on her Ruhrport um, industrialization, whereas me, I made three bucks and I started on my deliver to random upriver city um, technology. Alrighty, so we have both now done movement and coal sales. Next up, progress markers are received, but not in the first turn. That's very unlikely that would ever happen in the first turn. But now this is a good opportunity to talk about our tech tree. Okay, all of these uh, spaces represent additional abilities we can get over the course of the game. These ones represent the ability to build warehouses out here up on the board so we can score, make more money um, in, in various places, in downriver, upriver, and then also in um, coal depots all over the countryside. This represents our ability to build locks, which we need to do to get rid of these disruptions on the river so we don't lose, um, the our coal doesn't go down. This represents the ability to build warehouses in Ruhrport, which is very nice. And this one represents the ability to, be, to go upriver and start grabbing the white dice, which is very nice. That, um, that's a really big element. And then these are all special things. There's one of each, in a two player game, there's one of each. So we're both in kind of a race to see who will get each of these. And you know, they like increase the, the quality of coal, let you do a move for free, get three bucks, they do various things. But now, how do we earn these? This is the step, the, um, what is it, step 6.5, progress markers are received. We receive them based off this little um, symbol thing here. If at any point I ever have, say for this one, the Huff and Ruhrport, which means I can build warehouses in Ruhrport, which is the uh, place that Jen just delivered to. To get the Huff and Ruhrport ability, I have to have made two deliveries to industrial spaces and two deliveries to um, upriver cities. So two to industrial, two, two deliveries of, of black coal to industrial spaces and to orange cities. Meanwhile, to get the uh, Schlusenbau, I need to do one of each of those. So that's going to be a lot easier to get. And that means I can start building locks. And you can see like some of these big ones, I have to do a lot of deliveries. For this, this is like the best one in the game. This is a victory point at the end of the game for every warehouse you've built. You get, have to have two deliveries to... Um, to Ruhrport, two deliveries to industry, one delivery to an orange city, and then also for white dice, one, two, and one. So that's going to take a long time. And remember, this game only lasts for 12 turns. We're only ever going to make 12 deliveries. So for this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine of my 12 deliveries have to equal this for me to unlock the, which one is it? The Ruhrm bomb, which can score me big points at the end of the game. So that's like a long-term plan. If I'm going to go for that, I've got to be thinking about delivering coal that gets that for me. And now that is the crux of the difference that Jen and I did. I delivered to Verdun, so I've got my first step of technology here. Jen got her first step of technology here in Ruhrport. And what that means is, I guarantee you, she's trying to build very quickly so that she can get upriver. She's done her first of two reports. She needs to do another one. And she needs to do one of these. Me, because I did, um, I did this guy. I could be working very, very quickly to get this coal, this colin schlepper, or the um, the Schle the Schlusenbau, which is building locks. So I'm going for more of a short-term thing. Jen's going for more of a long-term thing. We'll see how that plays out. Anyway, as it stands right now, with only one of these things filled out, we can't get any of these techs, technologies, or progress markers, as they're called. So we're moving on to the next step: purchasing, shifting, export warehouses, and debt payment. Th basically, what that means is spending money. We can now spend our money to buy stuff. However, here on the first turn of the game, we've each made three bucks, but we can't buy anything yet because we don't have the tech. We don't have the tech to build, to, to buy locks and clear out these obstructions. We don't have the tech to buy warehouses and put them in the cities to make more money. So basically in the first turn, because we haven't done anything yet, we skip that and we move on. Now, 
on to the final step, award victory points, award export victory points, and advance the game turn marker. However, to get victory points for exports, we have to have built warehouses in Report. And since nobody's done that, we basically skip this turn. That'll happen later in the game. And we move on to step number two. Okay, and now we turn, turn number two. I'll run through one more turn really quick. This is turn number two. This is the first turn in the game where we are able to build locks. Every lock costs two bucks. But not only do we, so we've got the ability to do it, but we also have to have the technology to do it, which neither of us have right now. So we've uh, advanced the turn marker, and now we continue at the beginning. Conduct historical event, you know, water level, demand optimization, blah, blah, blah. So first thing, the uh, historical event was people started making locks. So we can do it now. Second thing, we find out what will the demand be, and it is muskets. Weapon factories would like more coal. So there are, let's see, there's three, I think. One, here's a weapons factory. Let's see, and then there's, where's the other two? Or that's like a regular blacksmith kind of thing. Oh, here's one. So this guy demands more coal. And then the other one's upriver in the fancy place. So now there's uh, some more. So that was the demand. Still no blocking, uh, you know, the river water hasn't risen or fallen, so nothing's blocking us. And now we choose our starting faces. I am way up river, so I'm the first player who's gonna get to choose to do this. And I believe I will, yep, I am just going, now I have a choice. I can choose any space downriver of where I am right now. And that's going to be the way it is for the rest of the game. Any space downriver, I can choose easy peasy because it's obviously easy to go downriver. If I want to choose a space upriver and get to this coal up here, I have to choose one of these horse actions. There's three of them, which means I can pay money, one buck or in some cases two bucks, to have a horse drag my barge back upriver so I can get at this stuff. However, I'm not going to buy, and you know, I would almost have to do that because if you look, downriver, there's no coal except for this one that I placed last turn. Remember, I placed this here knowing that I now don't have to pay a horse to go up river to get to this coal. So I am going to choose this space. That is my starting space. And I also get to choose an action. And I believe I will choose another transport action, which means I'll take the latest coal just sitting on where to be transports, and I will put it somewhere else downriver thusly perhaps, so that I'll be able to pick up this coal and I can just start hopscotching slowly down the river, making delivery after delivery after delivery, never having to pay the horseman to drag my barge up river. Jen, on the other hand, is all the way down river. So she can't go any, she has to go up river. So she's gonna have to pay the horse. She's gonna have to pay some money. And so thinking about it, she could come here to get to this guy. Uh, she can't come here because I've already taken it. Or she could go um, by paying the horse all the way up to those ones way up there and get one of them. And she's got to think about what does she want to do. Now, there's this new guy here who demands more money. But to be able to get him, not only would she have to pay a horse to get all the way up to get this coal that is upriver of it to deliver it down. But you notice that is three spaces. Normally the rule is one, two. If she comes here, she'd only deliver to steel. If she wants to deliver here, not only would she have to have the horse to come all the way up here to get this space, but she'd have to have the pilot to break the one, two rule. And that horse plus pilot costs two bucks. She doesn't want to spend that. She's only going to spend one buck, one of her money, to hire the horse, to drag her back up, and all the way up, she could come here, the one I just placed, remember I just placed that, and in so doing, she would ensure that, you know, she's kind of gotten in the way of my little plan to just like casually idle down the river. She's basically just given that to me. Alternatively, she could keep going up river, and that would give her the opportunity to take control of the game because she would be first player in the future. And now I got to ask, which is she going to do? That's a good question. Hmm, I think ah, she's got a strategy, she's going to stick with it. I don't know if it's going to work. She's going to basically kind of block me there and use the, the coal that I was actually going to use. She's just gone on ahead and grabbed it. Okie doke. Now, we're, we're done with that. We've both chosen an action. Jen had to pay for hers. Now we move on to actually delivering our coal. And as you can see, I'm still up river, so I'm still first player. And because I didn't choose a pilot space, I go down two, one, two. I've gone down two spaces and I've delivered this coal to this little forge, iron forge space. So I went across a 
barrier, which means my three turned into a two. Do, do, do. And it's been delivered. And when it gets delivered, it pushes this guy down. And they always kind of come in at the top and slide things down. So I've, I've made two bucks for that delivery. However, remember, um, I lose one of those bucks because I'm also setting up my infrastructure for delivering to industry. So I made one buck on that. And now I've got these two steps on my tech track. That's my turn. Jen's turn. She chose the, uh, she chose that space, which means she can only go one, two, and she can get down here to Ketwig. Now I'm wondering though, thinking about it, I wonder if she wants to do something else. Yeah, I think she will. I think she'll, she's fine with that. So she pay, she moved her one, two, and she's delivered this three, which now becomes a two, because again, it went over the rough waters, turns into a two, you know, comes in at the top, slides down. So, and same thing, she um, delivered two, but she really only makes one dollar because the other dollar goes towards, what is it? This is delivering to a city. So she's now got these two techs in place. Alrighty, we've uh, delivered and made some money. Now we move on to progress. Now, Jen, the two she's got don't give anything to her. Oh, ooh, yes, they do. She has just gotten the colon schlepper. Because you see, it needs one to um, report and one to, uh, to a city, which is what she's done. She just delivered to Ketwig. So she's just earned the colon schlepper, which there's only one of these in the two players. With more players, there's more of them. But there's only one of them. So I now put this blocker and indicate that I can never get this bonus. And this is a bonus that whenever she wants, she can increase the value of the coal she's delivering by three, which is, can be, which is basically it's three bucks whenever she needs it, just like that, boom. So that's the tech she unlocked. Me, I've got this one and this one, which if you look on the things, I have gotten the Schlusenbau, which means I, let's see, where is it over here? Uh, I can now start to build locks. I can spend money and build locks which I'm about to do. So that was our tech. We both earned a different type of tech. And now we move on to the next step where we can start spending our money. Now, Jen, she can't build anything yet. She has no tech, so she's not doing it. But me, I can build locks now. So I'm going to build a lock. Or in fact, in a two-player game, I'm going to build two locks. Now, the way locks work is it costs two bucks to buy one. And um, what we do is I pick any one of these obstructions on the river and I pick them up and I toss it into the chicken cup because on the back of all of these things are more events that could affect us later. So I got to think, which do I want to clear up? I think I'm going to clear this one up because I'm going to try and, gr and do this delivery down river next turn um, and deliver and make some more money by delivering to Muleheim. So I've cleared up this lock. I've successfully built a lock, which is represented by this little image of a lock. And every time you build a lock, you score two points. I've just scored the first two points of the game. It cost me two bucks. I made two points. Now, here's a special rule that only exists in the two-player game. It doesn't exist in the other levels. Um, you, during the first during turns two, three, four, five, two, three, four, and five, you can build two locks for the price of one. So I get to build another lock as well. Which is great because I'll score two more points. And I think I'm going to build a lock up here, up North River, because these guys in the fancy region, these are worth three points instead of two. So I built this one, and I've scored one, two, three more points. So I've just scored five points in total by spending two bucks. And, uh, right, we're done with our building. Jen, she doesn't have tech. She couldn't build anything. But instead, she got this thing that gets her three bucks whenever she needs it. Okay. Now we, we've finished with that, and finally we can award victory points, but we still we're not doing exporting, so we're at the end of that turn. Uh, let's move on to the third turn, 1775, where it was hard times, and if I recall correctly, I think the government started demanding higher tax or something like that. So each of us has to either give up a dollar or we lose a victory point. Me, I'm going to lose a victory point because I'm so far ahead, and I think Jen's going to lose a victory point too because she's got nothing to lose. So there's no reason for her to spend a buck. Um, there you go. So. KG. So she saw that coming. There is no problem. Okay. Then we um, conduct our, to, uh, you know, our water level determination. We look at a snoozy beagle. Dobby doo. She's not waking up for anybody. And what did we get? We got ah. We didn't. There is no extra demand this turn. There is going to be very strict limitations. Um, basically, we cannot um, use the pilot action. It comes over here, and we take this guy. And all three of these actions that have the pilot are covered up, which means we have less control, less power over where we deliver stuff this turn. 
And that bums Jen out considerably because what she was doing, she stayed down river me last turn because she wants to make another delivery to rear port. That is now impossible because delivery to rear port, you need a pilot to be able to come into dock. So she's going to have to change her plans because of that. Me, I don't mind so much because I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy go lucky upriver. So we'll see what happens with all of this. Oh, okay. So that was a bit of bad luck for Jen. And then we choose our starting space, our special option, and the game continues. I think I've shown you just a little bit of a run through of how it plays. You know, every turn there's an event. We've seen a couple of good events and now a bad event that really kind of stopped Jen on their tracks. We move our ships either upriver or downriver. We pick up the coal. We deliver it. We make money. We, if, depending on where we deliver it, we build more technology that gives us special abilities. We buy stuff and we score points for, for building stuff. As the game goes on, it just gets more and more complex. When the second half of the board gets opened up and you're deciding whether you're going to like be playing up there or down here, when you want to try and, you know, when you're trying to decide, okay, should I do a captain action or should I do a mule action or should I do both? But that cost me two. Later on in the game, um, the cost raise. So this, this ends up costing two and these end up costing three. Trying to, um, you know, make the right deliveries to be the first person to get these techs. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to think about in the game. And if you'd like to see a little bit more of that, you can push the button on screen right now. That will take you to extended playthrough, and I'll play through a few more turns and hopefully start showing off some of the deeper, more tricky strategic elements of the game. Alternatively, you can push the other button and skip right to final thoughts. I leave the decision in your capable hands in five, four, three, two. <laughs> oh, there's some coal dust in here. One. Bye-bye.